So when someone comes in complaining of memory loss, we're going to go through and talk through what are the risk factors that you need to start thinking about that create the profile of how much concern you need to have about this specific patient. In addition to that, as your role of primary care provider, you've got a whole population of patients to think about. Are some of them at higher risk than others? You bet. So we're going to talk about those risk factors and you can put them across your whole patient population and start thinking about who do you need to start talking to about health and wellness behaviors, brain healthy activities that they may not be paying attention to, or um, other health risks that they are facing. Make sure they understand that that's a risk not only to their physical health but to their brain health as well. So for both of those reasons we're going to become really familiar with what really makes someone at risk for having one of the neurocognitive diseases as they get older. What is the Alzheimer's profile? Well first we look at age knowing that as we age we age into higher risk factors. Next, we look at females, which are more susceptible than males to Alzheimer's disease. And then we look at the heart-head connection, looking at things like hypertension, diabetes, atrial fib, CVA, TIAs, cholesterol, lower education, and tobacco use. When we look at the Alzheimer's profile, we also consider depression, especially later life onset of depression. We also look at delirium, Delirium is more common in patients with dementia. There is also evidence that suggests patients without a known diagnosis of dementia who develop delirium are more likely to be diagnosed with dementia in the future. This is true of both delirium in the post-operative setting and during illnesses such as urinary tract infections and pneumonia. What other risk factors are there? First, we look at family history. If there's a first degree relative, we know we have four times the risk for Alzheimer's or related dementia. Of course, we look at head traumas, falls, work-related incidences, accidents, sports-related concussions and accidents. We also look at genetics, Down syndrome, APOE4, which is a present in approximately 20% of the population and increases the risk of Alzheimer's by at least eight times. If you have two, you increase your risk by 16 times. Next, we look at elevated homocysteine. Homocysteine is an amino acid. Elevated levels of homocysteine in the blood may indicate an increased risk for vascular disease, which also increases your risk for Alzheimer's disease. Finally, there is a growing body of research evaluating the connection between atrial fibrillation and sleep apnea. If you look at the left hand side of your screen, you're going to see things that may significantly reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease for your patient. As you look at the Alzheimer's profile, think about things such as education, exercise, brain fitness, an antioxidant diet such as the Mediterranean style diet, heart health, and social activity. Of course, on the right hand side of the screen, we've been talking about things that put us at greater risk. We know age is the greatest risk factor, we know that women are more susceptible than men to Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. We also know that heart health plays a key component in our risk factors, along with other diseases such as diabetes. We also understand that head traumas, family history, and other genes play an important and significant role in our risk factors. All of these things we've just described make up the Alzheimer's profile for your patient.